Will infrastructure expenditure make the future brighter? The 2014 budget speech coverage is brought to you by Old Mutual Corporate. Well, welcome back for a complete budget wrap. We are joined by Zueli Maboza, and he's the head of tax at Suizen Zuluba Hobodo, who's the, and George Glinos, he's the MD of ETM Analytics, Annabelle Bishop, Group Economist at Investec, and Alana Nell, Senior Tax Manager at Stonehenge in Cape Town. Uh, now the lines are open for all your questions, so please do give us a call. You can call us on 011 384 That's 011. One three eight four zero five nine eight. Uh, before I get to Lana and Lindsay will be joining us in a bit, but let's just get the conversation started. Your thoughts on what the budget held for us today, ladies first. I'll start here in the Johannesburg uh, offices and uh, speak to you, Annabelle. What did you make of the budget? I thought it was a particularly good budget, given the circumstances we have domestically and globally. We're obviously in a situation where we're going to be moving from accommodative monetary policy in the United States and in South Africa to eventually tighter fiscal, to tighter monetary policy. And in that environment, clearly we would need to see some path towards fiscal consolidation in today's budget. Indeed, that's exactly what was presented. The budget deficit came out at a better than expected 4% of GDP and is likely to drop to 2.8% of GDP. GDP by the end of the medium term expenditure framework. So that shows a certain path of fiscal consolidation. Mm -hmm. We also saw a downward revision in the public sector borrowing requirement, again, which is positive due to reduction in issuance of debt. And we also saw as well a reduction in real growth in expenditure, all of which should be very positive for the rating agencies. And that did not come at the expense of providing social welfare, but it certainly showed that we definitely are on the path of fiscal consolidation. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly no need whatsoever for any rating Grade. So you're looking at it from an upbeat perspective. You're quite happy with what we saw. George, you're still Given on the, the fence with the for the environment. George, you, you earlier when we were speaking, you said you're still on the fence on this with regards to the budget. Have you made up your mind? What did you make of it today? Y you know, I'm I'm known for my skepticism over over governments and and the way that they conduct their budgets. I, I for one, uh, think that this was a masterful political speech. I think he touched on a number of points that uh, have been plaguing a lot of people. He touched on the corruption. Uh, he touched a little bit on savings. He, st he touched on the infrastructural development. He mentioned NDP a lot. He, I think that he was touching on all the points that um, a lot of his critics, including myself, wanted him to touch on. Mm. So, so from that perspective, I, I would say, you know, generally, I would look at it positively. My concern is when you scratch beneath the surface. Mm. It's all very well and fine to pay lip service to the stuff, but at the end of the day, you have to deliver. And it's the delivery part where I'm particularly skeptical. We haven't seen a tremendous amount of progress in terms of the fiscal consolidation that they promised a couple of years ago. In fact, if anything, through the course of the past five years, there have been upward revisions to the budget deficit consistently. Now we're talking about growth rates that are in my opinion, a little bit too high, mm -hmm. quite unrealistic. They don't gel with our perspective on uh, what's realistic growth to achieve in South Africa over the next couple of years, or indeed what's going to be achieved internationally. And I would have liked to have seen, not just this year, but uh, you know, this goes back a few years, I, I would have liked to have seen greater effort uh, to curtail that government expenditure and to make more use with what they've got. Now, they mentioned it in, in, in this budget. Yeah. I want to see it delivered. When I see it delivered, I'll be the first to stand up and say, congratulations, you have, uh, you, you, you've done the right thing, you have um, delivered on, on what you've promised thus far. Um, it's, it's a lot of promises and, and I want to see it delivered. Caesar, tell us, did Pravin do enough? I think under the circumstances, I think he has done well. Uh, when I look at um, the economic situation and I look at what he covered in this budget, I think that the focus was right. He focused on controlling expenditure, which is something that is critical if you cannot be able to increase your revenues. Mm. And the other thing that he looked at is to say, what can we do to make sure that we, we boost the economy? Mm. The focus has been um, on small businesses. I think the small business people there, they were the winners in, in this budget. And they were the first ones to say, look, the, the minister had a good story to tell this year. And, um, but if you talk to other taxpayers, I don't think that they'll be saying the same thing. Um, 
the, although there are certain things that still need to be clarified, one of them is the national health insurance, the funding of that mm. still needs to be clarified. I understand that there is a paper that is going to be the in, in the public domain sooner. It will be interesting to see what is going to come out of that, work, uh, mm. out of that paper. Mm. The other question that still needs to be clarified is the, there's, a, there's a statement that was made by, in fact, it's not on the, on the speech itself, mm. but it's on the budget review that they, work, they are going to be looking at different sectors, companies that are operating in those sectors and analyze the effective tax rate of those companies. Now the question is, does that mean that we should expect an increase in effective tax rate mm. or in tax rate on certain sectors where, for example, they've got lower effective tax Mm. So I think the jury is still out on that. Mm. Carbon tax has been pushed back again. Uh, Zulia, I'm just going to interject there. I'm yeah. just going to, uh, but going to stop you for just for a moment before yeah. we head over to Alana because there are a host of things that we're definitely going to be touching on, especially with regards to tax. Now, one of the ways that government will look to stimulate the economy is by providing relief to small businesses that Zueli uh, touched on. Let's take a look. The turnover tax regime will be amended to further reduce the tax burden on micro-enterprises and consideration is being given to replacing the graduated tax structure for small business corporations with a refundable tax compliance credit. Azulia, we'll come back to you, but maybe take it back to uh, you, Annabelle. Um, there's been a big focus with uh, SMMEs uh, looking at the growth target. Do you think this is obviously a, a positive move? I think so. You know, we obviously are starting to see the first findings of the Davis Tax Commission. And clearly that has been instituted to try and promote the best tax system, the tax mix, the tax base for South Africa to promote the best type of economy that we possibly can. And that really means stronger economic growth, greater employment, reduction in poverty and inequality. Mm -hmm. And from that consequence, clearly we obviously need to look at how South Africans are taxed. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the changes proposed for the small business sector, they're quite positive. You know, obviously moving the tax tax rate down for companies that have a turnover of less than a million is, is always helpful for them. And of course ones that have less than I think it's 333,000 or something like that uh, annual turnover will obviously not be paying tax. All of those are positive but I think also the fact the focus on reducing red tape mm -hmm. and obviously essentially trying to stimulate the ability of these industries to, to grow. And that is key for South Africa because if you look at com countries like the United States, the bulk of job creation, new job creation, mm -hmm. comes from small businesses. So that's vital for South Africa that we do stimulate the entrepreneurial sector. Clearly other government policies need to come into play as well and particularly reduce rigidity of the labour market. Mm. Now Annabelle mentioned something very interesting there that um, we, we're going to be looking to the private sector and we need to have an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, one of the things that uh, Minister Pravin Gordon was saying that uh, you know the unemployment level is still at about 24 percent is way too high and it is still the responsibility of the private sector. Uh, George what would you what would be your um, your response to this uh, comment? Well, yeah, I, I, I would agree largely. Um, I, in, in fact, if, if one has a look at the, the employment numbers, uh, it suggests that in fact government is op operating quite differently. In that, uh, much of the, the jobs that have many of the jobs that have been created in the past year have been created in government, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's been the case for a couple of years now. So uh, yes, I, I would love to see the private sector playing a, a greater role in, in that em employment creation, but. You know, just again, just talking about it in these very simplistic ways, um, I, I think hides the complexity of the issues that, that belie this. I mean, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot more to starting a small business. Mm. Uh, there's all sorts of, um, there's all sorts of uh, considerations uh, that, that need to be looked at. Uh, you need to look at funding, you need to look at the size of the market, you need to look at, I mean, it's good that we're talking about reducing red tape, it's good that we're talking about um, softening the, the, the tax levels. Bear in mind that's also though to, to improve the level of compliance at that level because mm. if we don't go that route all that happens is that you get guys cheating on their taxes. So, so um, there, there's, there's a, a, again, I, I still think there's a little bit of, of political spin in this whole thing uh, because ultimately, um, speaking as a small business owner, mm. uh, I can tell you it's, it's, it was tough uh, to begin with and, mm. and you've got a, a lot of bureaucracy that you still have to deal with uh, for small businesses and, and uh, the more we can let that go, uh, the better off we'll be. But it goes again, even further than that, where we need to be talking about uh, not just entrepreneurial programs, mm. but but programs which, which help 
uh, youngsters that perhaps aren't going to university mm. uh, acquire skills that they can then utilize to, to take things a little bit further. It's, 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 quite, a, it's quite a complex and in-depth conversation that would probably take us the better part of many hours in a day. Mm. Well, I'm going to cross over to Cape Town because we haven't forgotten about them. Lindsay uh, is uh, there. Lindsay, what, have you make, what do you make of some of the comments that we've already heard around the desk uh, with regards to what has come out of today's budget? I haven't really heard very much actually because I went to interview uh, the minister earlier on at Parliament and of course there's apart from the P&G show there's also the M&M show tonight so Cape Town completely gl gridlocked when it, <laughs> in terms of traffic so I haven't heard much but I've got Ilana Nell from Stonehenge in the studio with me in Cape Town it's a nice budget for you Ilana because nothing happened with tax, tax essentially. It's absolutely right um, I think as we expected it's been conservative the changes has been very little mm. uh, and really uh, there's not much mm. um, in terms of changes. Were you expecting anything more than he, he actually delivered or were you expecting this sort of flatliner as we call it? We were expecting it but, but you never know. Um, specifically relating to, to trust we were perhaps expecting a, a comment that the Davis Committee are also including that in their review. Um, but we haven't seen that. So unless it forms part of the broader overview of estate planning and, and estate duties, uh, which it possibly could, you know, it is quite surprising. He had no manoeuvrability, though, did he? I mean, this year it was the the sort of uh, loaves and fishes budget, uh, as I said to him earlier on. Uh, th there wasn't much he could do. Yeah, I think there wasn't much, and especially with the Davis Committee that are looking at so many of the issues to make changes now without taking into account their recommendations. You know, would be difficult. So on the areas where they have commented already. Um, which they've discussed as the small and medium enterprises, mm. he did recommend uh, and propose changes. Yeah. As really, just bringing you back in from um, uh, Johannesburg, uh, do you agree with what Ilana has said, with there was no manoeuvrability and this is what, is what was expected from the minister? Yeah, look, we were not expecting a lot of changes, but because the collections are down, I was partially thinking that maybe there's going to be change in CGT rate and that did not happen, which I think is good news. So um, the fact that it did not happen is good news for, for is in particular for, for high earners. The other thing that I thought was possible uh, that they were going to do, I thought that they were going to look at a hybrid way of introducing VAT for expensive goods, in other words, for goods that are consumed by high worth individuals. And the reason why I had that kind of expectation is because when the NIH was introduced, um, for the first time by the minister, he mentioned that they were going to look at, um, at, at VET possible as one of the possibility of funding NIH. And uh, I thought that they were going to do that because someone was, was saying to me, no, because this is a year of elections, you should have not expected that. And I'm saying, look, I did not expect it all, and it all happened. Um, I did not expect the huge wage subsidy to be passed, the bill to be, to be signed into law. It was signed into law. So those were just few things that I think the majority of tax advisors, they did not think that they were going to happen. I think I was just a lone voice who was someone who thought that something like that was likely to happen. Well, let's see if Ilana joined you there. Was he a lone voice? No, I don't think he was completely alone, but I think it is good news. It doesn't mean that it's off the cards for, for next year, um, especially as you mentioned with the National Health, Health Plan. So uh, I just think it was, it was too quick and, and perhaps not the right time now, but next mm -hmm. year is, is another year.